Hi, I'm at Drake's 7Ds today. We'll be talking about carnivorous plants. I come here often because the people are always friendly. My name's Bonlu Rugway. I'll be talking about carnivorous plants today. I got interested in carnivorous plants when my dad took me to a nursery in Davis. I saw a carnivorous plant there, and it's, well, it's not every day that you see a plant that eats meat. There's something like 9,000 different species. The Venus flytrap is found in North and South Carolina. They have a snap trap, which means that their trap snaps shut when an insect goes in. Mm. There's an exoskeleton of the fly here. So the insect lands. If it triggers two of the hairs within a 20 second interval, the plant closes. If it triggers a third hair, then it begins digesting the insect. When it's finished digesting the insect, which takes about a week, it opens up and lets the wind blow away the dried exoskeleton. They don't get many nutrients from the soil. That's why they had to resort to eating insects. The Venus flytrap, which I have, it sometimes got the ants, but the ants were usually too small, so I would often feed the insects that got trapped in between the, the screen and the window. Nepenthes pitcher plants, they're found in Asia. They have a pitcher with a lid. Some of them capture rainwater. Nectar draws the insect in. It comes out of the lip, and it's slippery. So if when the insect lands on it to drink some nectar, some of them will slip in. Ants, flies, whatever will come. Uh, some larger species of pitcher plant have been known to eat bats, birds, and shrews. One of the biggest is the Nepenthes raja, and they live in symbiosis with the mountain shrew, which is about the size of a rat. I have a a ant infestation in the bedroom, and the ants were dumb enough to keep falling into the pitcher plant like every day, so I didn't have to worry about feeding it. The Sarcatra species pitcher plants, they, they live in the U.S. They are found in bogs, and they use a similar technique for trapping. Their lip isn't really slippery, but the nectar comes in from the lid. So the insect goes onto the lid. There's small downward facing hairs on the lid. So when, if the insect slips on the lid, it falls in and there's downward facing hairs in the pitcher itself. And when the insect tries to climb out, it can't. And the digestive juices inside the plant coat its wings and legs. Some insects can survive the acid, like a few species of mosquito larvae. And the mosquito larvae, they pick the exoskeletons clean and the scraps the plants eats, and mosquitoes poop it eats too. So they go dormant in the winter. If you got a plant and then it looks like it died, it might have died or it might have just gone dormant for the winter. I did put the Venus flytrap in the refrigerator, but Nepenthes pitcher plants, they're tropical plants, so they live in the tropics at all times. You keep them by a window and you miss them every few days and just try to keep it from freezing. The sundew is one of my favorite plants because, well, they're when an insect lands, some species, their tentacles will move towards the insect and like this species, they w the leaves will actually curl around the insect, and they can be found pretty much everywhere from Alaska to California to the deserts all over the place, even Australia. A clear nectary substance on their leaves that's very sticky, so if I touch one of the leaves, you, you might be able to see the nectar come here, like that. Some species can get quite big, like I think four feet or something like that. The largest is the king sundew. What's your name? Anthony. Thanks for letting us film this video in, at your nursery. You're so, so how do you propagate these carnivorous plants? What about the sundews? 
these little guys, they'll self-sow. After this flower forms, the seed will develop. And when the seed develops, you can just kind of scatter them on moist uh, peat moss and sand mix. And within a couple months, you'll start to see a whole bunch of little baby drosaras pop up. This is another species of Sarcatra pitcher plant. These capture rainwater, and the hairs on the lid are much more noticeable. They eat bugs, but they, like, they do usually have like mosquito larvae, but they prefer higher altitudes, so they usually don't rely on other insects. This fold here, when it rains, there's a little gap, so when it rains, they release water from the pitcher so it doesn't flood. Well, butterworts are one of the most common plants kept in houses. They are good in like kitchens that are full of gnats and other insects, flying insects. They release pink or purple flowers on a tall stalk, kind of like the sundews. Butterworts are often kept for keeping kitchens bug-free. They are very easy to keep, yet, but they do hibernate, so putting them in the refrigerator at winter is a good idea. If you keep a carnivorous plant that requires hibernation and you don't want to put it in the refrigerator, maybe if it's cold outside, you can just leave it outside. Above freezing, but not by much. If you want to have a pet and your parents don't want let you have one, well, it depends on what kind of pet you'd like. If it's a dog, a carnivorous plant would probably not work. They're very slow growers and they're not very interesting. But like a snake, lizard, or some other, like a fish maybe, these would be fine. They're probably cheaper too. Carnivorous plants aren't really hard to keep. They can be a little boring, but uh, they can be interesting. And fun to watch, especially Venus flytraps and sundews and 